How many times did Emma Watson audition before snagging the iconic role? Now, if you two don't mind, I'm going to bed before either of you come up with another clever idea to get us killed. Or worse, expelled. To which extremes did she go to get into character? <laughs> 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 and what's the dark secret she revealed about playing Hermione Granger? It was very emotional, lots of tears. Hi, I'm Dylan, and you're watching Awesome Movies, all aboard the Hogwarts Express. She didn't get the role straight away? I checked this out first term. For a bit of light reading, this is light. Shut up. What you just saw was her first audition. Look closely and you'll see the date was August 2000. Scene A, take four, Mark. Already 20 years ago, where did the time go? Though Emma took auditioning seriously, she never really thought she had any chance of getting the part. Apparently, she only tried out because her friends were doing it, and she thought it would make for a good laugh. As a child, I loved being on stage. I loved the lights, the adrenaline, I even loved learning lines. I was completely obsessive. Thankfully, this dogged nature also motivated her to audition. Well, that, and a push from her theater teachers, who added her name to the casting agent's hat. You'd think she was cast immediately, knowing how perfect she is for the role, right? You'd be wrong. At just nine years old, Emma was picked out of a lineup of hopefuls in her school gym. However, she still had to audition for the part over seven times before bagging the role. Surprisingly, writer J.K. Rowling at first thought Emma was too pretty to play Hermione. Now, wasn't that ironic? To be honest, Radcliffe and Rupert and Emma are all too good-looking. You know, the characters were geeky. Luckily, she was mostly joking. While the whole casting process was stressful, Emma enjoyed it. She'd literally sit by the telephone in her house waiting for each call. When they had her in for the ninth audition, she was like, wow, nine. Finally, she was called into producer David Heyman's office. When he said she was the preferred candidate for the role, she was ready to start obsessing over what preferred meant but didn't get the time. Before she could say, They'd taken a photograph of her, Radcliffe and Grint, and their casting was broadcast on the internet. By the time she got back to her house, she says the press was already waiting outside, so they had to move straight to a hotel. Hectic. Before being cast in Harry Potter, Emma had never done any professional acting. Well, she was nine, so there's that. Regardless, she made it look totally easy, a natural actress. Aside from obsessing over things, there were other challenges she had to face on the set. Getting into character. Watson nails her role as Hermione. One reason is that she shares many similarities with her witty character. I can imagine Emma being just as likely to say, it's Leviosa, not Leviosa, just like Hermione. When she was growing up, Watson tried to separate herself from the character, but eventually stopped fighting the comparison. At first, I was trying to say, I'm not like Hermione, I'm into fashion, and I'm much cooler. And then I came to a place of acceptance. There are obviously differences, but there are a lot of ways that I'm very similar. And there's a funny story that confirms just how much Emma is similar to Hermione. During the filming of The Prisoner of Azkaban, director Alfonso Cuaron gave Grint, Radcliffe, and Watson an assignment. They each had to discuss their characters in an essay. Just like Ron, Rupert forgot to write the essay. Much like Harry, Daniel only turned in one page. And, you guessed it, Emma pulled a Granger move and handed in a 16-page essay. Perfect casting, I'd say. So since she's so similar, you'd guess it wasn't tough getting into character? Nah, I wouldn't go that far. There are noticeable differences between the two, starting with hair color. Yeah, Emma had naturally blonde hair. In order to become Hermione, she had to dye it a darker shade. While it's apparent that the producers tried to stick as closely to the book's description of Granger, they can't incorporate every element. That said, one of the things cut from the film was Hermione's oversized front teeth. But it wasn't for lack of trying. Poor Watson had to wear false teeth for a while, like in this scene. Oh, are you doing magic? Let's see them. According to Chris Columbus, director on Sorcerer's Stone, he realized she couldn't keep acting with them in her mouth. Thank goodness for small realizations. That was just some of the physical changes Watson had to make to get into character. The actress has also admitted to overdoing her role. To hilarious effect. Like Hermione, Emma was keen on knowing everything, to the point of it becoming quite tiresome for everyone else. In the same way, Watson read and memorized everyone else's lines. The outtake clips from the first movie, of her mouthing Radcliffe and Grin's lines for them, are comedic gold. Of course, Jimmy Kimmel dug this one up to address it in an interview, to which Emma, mortified, responded, This is actually quite traumatic for me, because I created issues because of this. Oh, really? Yes, I would ruin
even takes. Chris <laughs> would be like, caught, Emma, you're doing it again. As a result, the cast and crew had to reshoot Daniel and Rupert's scenes. Emma said, I couldn't help myself. I was such a loser. I really loved those books. I really wanted to do my job well, and I kind of overdid it. I'm pretty sure it endeared her to her fellow co-stars, especially considering that Radcliffe used to have a little crush on her. Yeah, Daniel mentioned that between the filming of the third and fifth film, they were the only boys and girls they knew, so he might have felt attracted towards her. However, it settled down. Still, she wasn't immune to one co-star's charms. Her secret crush on set. Well, obviously, not so secret anymore. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> well, you ruined it. <laughs> you trying to scare me? I was going to come behind you and give me a kiss on cheek. <laughs> Did Emma have feelings for Ron's actor, Rupert? Nah, just toying with you. While filming the first two movies, she fell under the spell of another actor. None other than Tom Felton, who played her rival house member, Draco Malfoy. Yep, Emma's admitted to having had a huge crush on Felton when they were kids. We love a bad guy and he was a few years older and had a skateboard. And that just did it, really. He used to do tricks on it. He was so cool. Much later, he heard about her former crush through the grapevine and responded, We've been friends for a long time and it's very flattering. I had a little boy crush on Helena Bonham Carter, who played Bellatrix. Fast forward to today and they're great friends who can laugh together at the folly of youth. There was one awful incident between the two though. You'll remember that one scene where she threatened Draco and then punched him in the face? Let's just say that behind the scenes things were quite realistic. Instead of a movie slap as Felton calls it. She just went and just smacked me right across the face. Which completely took me, uh, I didn't know what to do. And I was Turns out it was just an accident, nothing more. But I feel terrible. I feel really bad. I'm not really sure what I was thinking. <laughs> As you can see, the role demanded more than just book smarts, but also some physical action, as well as romantic scenes. Embarrassing and awkward moments. Like probably any child actress in the world, adult Emma is embarrassed to watch her younger self in the movies. There's one specific issue she had with Hermione that still irks her to this day. When she looks back at the earliest films, her hair is what she sees first. In fact, it's one of her major regrets. When I see images of the first Harry Potter, I immediately think of how ugly my hair was. Thankfully for her, the character experienced a transformation over the years. The Beauty and the Beast actress also came to the realization that feeling beautiful has nothing to do with what you look like. Hopefully she'll look past the wild hair next time she sees herself as Granger. On another note, the cast clearly had lots of fun while filming. <laughs> Grint even shared how they had something special made for him. And then we did make a little, they made this little seat for me. They kind of took a mold of uh, my. Go on, <laughs> say it, say it. Chair area. Bombcast. Yeah, had a bombcast. Bomb I also had a bombcast. <laughs> Funny, right? When asked to recall one of her favorite lines, my favorite line is. I'm going to bed before either of you come up with another clever idea to get us killed, or worse, expelled. <laughs> Watson said she got so much joy out of that goody two-shoe scene. There were other scenes that turned out to be not just funny, but also super uncomfortable to film. Watson, Radcliffe, and Grint basically grew up together and saw each other as siblings. So it's not surprising that it was pretty weird for Emma to kiss both of them during different stages of filming. Her dance scene with Daniel turned out to be perfect, silly, and spontaneous. What stands out in her mind, though, is the long building kiss between Hermione and Ron. Behind the scenes, both Grint and Watson were dreading it. Believe me, we both wanted it to be over equally as much as the other. They eventually got through it by laughing a lot. We just got through it by laughing a lot. <laughs> it was good. He's a nice kisser. The other thing that helped make the scene more bearable, the director says it best. You knows that rather than doing 27 takes, she knew if she committed really early, <laughs> we'd get it. More proof that Emma's a smart girl. Just as there's light, there's also the darker side of things. Emma's dark secret. Filming Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix made her want to quit the franchise. In her own words, I hate to sound whiny, but it was horrible. This has definitely been the most intense, grueling period of filmmaking I've ever done. Thank goodness she stuck it out. There's something even more shocking. She almost quit acting altogether. Being only nine when she was cast, the almost instant worldwide fame was really tough on her. The cameras, the flashing, it was just <sighs> scary. On top of that, the young star struggled for years with feelings of guilt over having landed the role. How so? 
Speaking candidly with Vogue, Watson admitted that because she was so burdened by the fame, she felt guilty and wondered if someone else should have gotten the role, perhaps one who would have handled the exposure better. As a kid, she couldn't have known exactly what she was signing up for. As the fame grew and grew, she had to reorient herself mentally. There have been moments when everything just got so big that I almost had vertigo on my own life, and it got so big that I felt disconnected. That's such a tough experience for a young child to go through. Luckily, her family and friends have been her saving grace and kept her rooted. There's another angle to why she almost quit acting. She wanted to attend university badly. Ron Weasley would probably say, she needs to sort out her priorities, right? David Heyman, who produced the Harry Potter films, told Glamour that, Emma was academic and very keen in pursuit of schooling and was wrestling a bit more than the others. So each time there was a negotiation, it was not about a financial matter, it really was about, do I want to be a part of this? After the movies ended, the actress remained as committed to her education as ever. Post Potter and post school, um, I definitely want to keep making movies, but I just don't want to limit myself. There's so many different things I'm interested in. I just, I want to, I want to try everything. She since revealed that, although it took her a long time, she's really happy today. And on the whole, she's grateful for her 10-year experience in the famous franchise. Her last day of filming was therefore an emotional one. When they said, that's Emma Down and Rupert Rapt, it just hit me. I cried, cried, cried. It was really emotional and overwhelming. Over to you. Which info surprised you the most? Or did you know it all like Hermione? Share with us in the comments, and as always, stay awesome!